Hello popcorn junkies. Wow, we've got a major tentpole superhero DC Films <gasps> trailer that's just landed uh, coming from the, uh, well, some would say struggling sort of DC Films uh, universe, uh, currently looked after by um, James Gunn, he of uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. This is Aquaman 2. Now, when we first put this uh, channel together and we were first reviewing and reacting to things, Aquaman 1, uh, let's put it this way. We didn't pull our punches uh, around the fact that we were firmly Marvel fans and we found and thought that Aquaman 1 was going to be just a bit shit, to be brutally honest. It was a bit shiny, it was a bit glossy, it wasn't particularly funny, it took itself too seriously and all that kind of stuff. I have to say, I did a review of Aquaman, the first film, and my review was pleasantly surprised. I, I enjoyed it more than I thought. I, I, it wasn't my type of thing, um, but I enjoyed it more than I was going to. Jason Momoa is a kind of curious one for me. Um, he, I, there's something about him that appeals to me. I like his rings. I love his jewellery. Uh, he gets them from a similar place to where we get ours, or the same place, I think. Also, uh, et, I forget the name of the... It's a great sort of bone skull rings and all that kind of stuff. So I like him. I like his look. Um, there's, you know, he, he, I mean, he's movie star stuff, isn't he? I mean, that hair, that beard, those eyes, that chest hair. <sighs> the scales, the smell of fish, all that sort of stuff. Um... So it's obviously Aquaman. I think, but one of the things that I think about this Aquaman two trailer that's going to particularly excite people or uh, annoy people, but certainly interest people, is going to be the extent to which Amber Heard, she of Johnny Depp fame, obviously there was the famous Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial, which we covered at length on the channel. Uh, there's a Netflix series uh, about the coverage of the trial. Uh, uh, between Amber Heard and Johnny Depp. This is Amber Heard's uh, first real appearance on screen since that trial. Obviously, a lot of chat about whether her part was being diminished, reduced, whether she had a bigger part until the moment the trial kind of backfired against her and all that kind of stuff. Lots of no sort of notorious stories that she was tricky, she's troublesome, she's she's all these things. Uh, you know, you have to you have to try and di divorce the kind of in inherent sort of uh, misogyny away from, well, could she just also be a really difficult talent to work with? James Wan, the director, has gone to great lengths to stress that in this film, uh, the emphasis is on Aquaman, uh, Jane, Jason Momoa, uh, and his bromance, if you like, with his half-brother Orm, played by Patrick Wilson. Uh, the, the idea being that the first film was very much about uh, Aquaman and Amber Heard, for sure. So Amber Heard's role was always going to be smaller. So I think James Wan, the director here, is trying to fan away any potential kind of controversy around the idea that her part has been diminished, uh, made less, foreshortened, ground to a halt or whatever. It also stars Nicole Kidman. It also has uh, Willem Dafoe in there too. But most significantly, the evil, the, the malevolent evil kind of antagonist is going to be uh, Yahya Abdul-Mateen, uh, the, the second, again, uh, playing Black Manta. So it's going to be a repeat match. It's going to be a return bout. It's going to be a fishy fight to the depths of the ocean. There's going to be tridents. There's going to be all that kind of stuff. I love, I love the land of Atlantis and all that kind of stuff. I think the idea of Aquaman, I have to say, when I was a comic book fan, I never bought into Aquaman. I always thought, this is ridiculous. This is a fish man. I mean, I mean there's Neptune. Aquaman? Nah. Nah. But I have to say, just the sheer persistence of the films and actually something that Jason Momoa must have achieved has made me believe in him as a significant superhero. The other issue with this film, I think, which we all need to think about is... Will this film mark the end of a certain type of superhero era? Uh, we had The Flash, I thought it was a sensationally brilliant film, actually, but obviously it was completely dogged by, hampered by, and uh, hamstrung by um, Ezra Miller's uh, controversies off screen. And also, I think the fact that no one really quite knew where to place the film within the broader perspective of superhero films. I mean, we've talked a lot here before, we're not going to talk about it again, but superhero films are at a bit of a crossroads. They either need to go on a deep dive into deep existential angst, uh, or they need to do something different. They need to to kind of, I don't know, change the rubric, you know, re redefine the paradigm, whatever. They need to do something to rejuvenate life into the whole concept of the superhero film. So my fear with this is it's going to be more of the old DC. And lots of people are saying, why won't DC just change for good? Why don't they just do a massive reset? Is this going to be a hangover from an old DC? Is it going to suffer because of that? Or is the kind of controversy around Amber Heard and all that going to carry it through? There's some good talent in there. Yaya Abdul-Mateen, I'm an enormous fan of. He's a fantastic actor. Um, and as I say, I think whatever you think of Jason Momoa, uh, he's certainly made this part his own. So without further ado, let's check out probably the biggest remaining superhero film to be released uh, certainly this year, or possibly for another year, well into next year. So let's check this out. Four years ago, I was basically unemployed. A wanderer with no home. 
Nice now. lighthouse. I'm a husband and a father. <clears throat> and I wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> and I do, boss. My job was a little less stressful than yours. <laughs> Oh yeah, I finally got a job. I'm the king of Atlantis. Half a billion people from every known species in the sea call this place home. But that doesn't mean they all like me. I'm gonna kill Aquaman and destroy everything he holds dear. It is. I'm gonna murder his family. Fair enough. And burn his kingdom to ash. Standard villainy. He must be stopped, or a global meltdown is imminent. Shit. I think I know someone on my bill to help us. Ooh. Groot. You look rough. Good job, little brother. High five. Do not call me, brother. I cannot believe you let this happen. Yeah, well, I hate this job. True king builds bridges, right? <laughs> True king builds bridges. <laughs> we need to find Manta. He's different now. He's stronger than before. It's the Black Trident. During King Atlan's time, there were seven kingdoms. Tried it. it was a curse upon them all. The Trident's dark magic is spreading. He means to end the bloodline. I don't know what lies ahead, but we can't leave our children a world without hope. You're not as bad at this as you think. If you lead. The Seven Kingdoms will follow. When Mash gets smashed. I hate to say it, Black Manta, that's what he looks like. But with those eyes, he looks like the When Mash Goes Smash from the 1970s advert. <laughs> Very shiny. Obviously very CGI, not a problem, but felt a little bit more like bed knobs and broomsticks to me than, say, Avatar. When you've had Avatar, uh, not that I'm an Avatar fan necessarily, but once you've had Avatar do all of that underwater shit so spectacularly convincingly, um, four guys or four dudes standing in a row with their hair waving like that looked a bit looked a bit weird. Uh, the moment where Jason Momoa, Aquaman, leapt up and bounced his body against that enormous sort of statue... Um, he looked like he'd just walked out the front entrance of a uh, Weatherspoons. Uh, he, sort of, he sort of ambled, didn't he? And, I mean, I felt they were kind of trying to nibble into that concept around Thor with Chris Hemsworth in, in Marvel, the idea that he's gone to seed, he's drunk too much beer, the middle eight, midlife spread has set in. But of course, midlife spread for someone like Jason Momoa just means more pecs on your pecs uh, and all that kind of stuff. There was a moment, wasn't there, with Amber Heard looking extraordinarily angry behind a sort of porthole of some sort, which is possibly just a shot from her everyday life. Um, I'd, I'd be lying if I didn't say it looked it looked just like the last film. The, the story's kind of the same. I, I suppose if we're hoping for anything different there, it's the bromance between Patrick Wilson and J Jason Momoa. Not entirely sure. I just think this is the last roll of this kind of dice. I don't think DC or Warner or anyone are going to be really thinking this. Is going to, if this does well enough, that's going to be a bonus. But I don't... I personally... What do you think, guys? I personally don't think that has enough about it for it to be an absolute hit. I mean, it's December the 20th. That's the big Christmas release. I don't know. I, 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 I just feel it's, it's, it's superhero by numbers. And, and some of those scenes with the colours and the pictures of sort of underwater flora and fauna looked like painting by numbers to me.